Hey everyone, it's been a while and um, I just want to give you guys a short update before I do the Q&A and that is, um, as you can see, you know, it's a new background, new space, um, it's very exciting. I've just moved back to my newly renovated place for about a month already and uh, it's been taking a lot of time to just build this space slowly. Things have been pretty slow, um, there's no travel still right now. <laughs> Life has been pretty slow for me and I've just been taking the time to reorganize my life and everything, my work processes. But anyways, once the space and the house is like kind of ready, I can't wait to show you guys the finished look. So stay tuned for that. And yes, let's head out, shall we? So, first question by Song the Goat. Are you a full-time content creator slash filmmaker? It's a yes and no. I am first and foremost like freelance videographer. That's how I earn my full-time income. I produce videos, I create videos for brands, for the marketing campaigns, for their social media campaigns, and it will be posted on their page. So that is what primarily pays me full-time. And if I'm not doing any of those projects, I am full-time, 110% devoting my energy and everything into the YouTube channel and Instagram, basically my social media pages. But the thing is, it does not give me full-time income. Doing YouTube does not directly pay me a lot, but it has gotten me a lot of opportunities to um, work on really interesting projects with brands that I love. It has allowed me to travel a lot because I've just been you know, uploading a lot of content on this channel. Next question by Melvin. How do I get so good at vlogging? There are a few variables. I don't have a crazy explosive personality. I'm always trying to find a balance between um, just being real authentic and just being crazy loud, personable at the same time. So I'm not the best personality that you see in the YouTube scene especially in Singapore. I mean, it, it just boils down to a lot of practice. People will just judge you and you just have to pretend that you are owning this shit. You know, people just look at you like that cyclist. The next thing I'd like to say is, of course, editing plays a huge part. It takes a lot of experience and practice. A lot goes into like just choosing the right music. The cuts as well has to be really concise and just the whole flow of the video has to flow seamlessly. A lot of those subtle things that makes up for a watchable vlog. Alright, so next question by Jatsu.btn What's the first country you're going to visit after COVID? To be honest, there's not going to be like a cutoff point where COVID is gone and we can have all of the options out there for us to choose where to go to. It's going to be like whichever country that opens up first, I will just flock to there, right? <laughs> but if I had a choice, I always tell this to friends, if I had a choice to choose one country, just one country to go back to in 2021, that would be Japan. I know, very mainstream, everyone loves Japan, well, I guess most people love Japan. I mean, everything about Japan is amazing. It has amazing food, gorgeous scenery, beautiful culture, the most polite people, and did I mention amazing food and amazing food? Like, just, just, just everything to love about Japan. I even made a video on how much I missed Japan last year, all right? So you can go check that out. Yup, Japan all the way, although right now, as of April 2021, Things are not looking very good for Japan. Yeah. Come on. You can do this. Ugh. Next question by Sherified. Like, what's your driving force in filmmaking? What keeps you going? For me, I've always imagined myself when I grow old and just watch. Oop, it's a car. So yes, as I was saying, I would just imagine myself 80 years old sitting on the couch and just watch my life play through and I want to watch back on all the amazing things that I've done, beautiful places that I've been and cultures and experiences that I've lived 
through and it's just like a natural driving force to want to document all of these things as I go through life and even interesting bits of my life I just want to document them and just um, put it up so that one day when I look back when I'm old I can know that yup yeah, I I could watch interesting stories of my life and even during a time like this in COVID even though it, things are a little more less interesting right now and it's, it's been tough but nevertheless the, the, the next thing would be definitely you know I want to try and inspire others around me to also go out there and do things that are not very comfortable and experience more last of all it would be deadlines deadlines do help me to just push forward and try to again create something out of nothing when I feel really really uninspired Next question by Emeline A. How do you maintain a sustainable income through photography and videography? I think the first thing would be to make sure you build relationships with people and brands. Make sure that you are flexible enough in your work and uh, just work towards building long-term relationships with brands that you kind of resonate with. In that case, there will be a higher chance of people just wanting to work with you again and do it in the long term. And if you have long-term clients, then you know you have a more sustainable returning incomes and then number two I guess is to really just keep on working on your branding keep on working on your craft make sure that you're always experimenting and just trust the universe Okay, next question by WeZackWX. Yo, 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 how are you making income and is it sustainable for yourself as a Singaporean YouTuber? And I already, I guess, I'm already addressed this question in the first one. But yes, I'm also starting to get more projects with brands who want to work with me on my social media channel. So that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, it's very occasional and yeah, I'm still in the middle of that transition. So I do want to see myself to be creating more YouTube content and making more sustainable income from just creating content on YouTube. Um, it's gonna be a very tough thing, but yes, that is the plan. Okay, next question by Amabel. What made you take the leap to become a content creator full-time? So I didn't take a big leap to become a full-time content creator. I did not quit any job. In fact, I've never had a full-time job, so I don't know what it feels like to have paid leave. So ever since I graduated from university, I've just been juggling between freelance work and doing YouTube, and there wasn't any full leap. And I've always been treating creating YouTube content as like kind of my full-time job. Next question by So Chris. What's up, Chris? How do you pivot and find opportunities during lean times? Yeah, it is indeed lean times. And I, I, to be honest, I don't think I've really pivoted that much, like 180 degrees, found a new job or whatnot. The only obvious pivot that I did was to do more local content, to kind of like discover more hidden places in Singapore, to find more interesting things to do in Singapore and try and build more of a local audience. And because of the pandemic, it has allowed me to be able to do a renovation to my current home. It would not have been possible if I was traveling about. And yep, so this was the perfect time to do a renovation to kind of just reorganize my life at home and my work processes. And lastly, I've been doing workshops, monthly workshops with Sony. So that kind of helps a little bit. Next one, any tips for the aspiring content creator to make similar content as you? You can try the same approach that I do. First of all, I, I basically just watch content that I like to watch, that I'm drawn to, right? And try to pick out um, certain things that I like about it. And then after that, I also watch YouTube content on or things that have been done before. And then I will try to make it different in my own videos. Next question by Hanafi Sadik. Hi Sean, love your videos since you did the OFO ride from Jurong to Changi. Oh my God, that was so long ago. Thank you so much. Just a question, did you have formal education or training in film and videography before I am doing what I'm doing right now? The answer is no, I have no education in filmmaking or whatnot. I studied tourism in poly and then marketing in uni. So in a way kind of related to travel but nothing related to filmmaking. I just watched a lot of YouTube tutorials and I just went on and shoot and then upload and then repeat. 
Okay, so now on to the second section of this Q&A, which are going to be more technical questions. Do you shoot S-Log in your vlog? I do not shoot in S-Log. I actually shoot in HLG3, and this is how the raw footage looks like. And I'm going to apply a conversion, and then after that, I will grade it. And this is how it looks. Next question. Please teach us uncommon photo slash video hacks that I like. Okay, so I've got one video hack or tip and that is to get really smooth looking video footage. All you need to do is to lock your wrist, elbow and shoulders and use your legs or body to do the movement and you'll get really smooth looking footage. And Mr. Bokeh, what is your go-to shooting settings for resolution and frames per second? Uh, my shooting resolution, I always shoot in 4K for my YouTube videos all the time, 4K. 24 frames per second what made me choose Sony cameras? So to answer that as surely as I can, basically I was using the old cameras from Canon. I was using the 550D, the 6D, but the Canon wasn't really pushing it in terms of video quality and performance. And Sony at the same time was coming out with their mirrorless cameras like the A7S II. So I jumped ship and haven't looked back since. Um, they have been innovating, but I would say Canon has kind of caught up already and it is very tempting to jump back. But right now I'm just too invested into the Sony ecosystem. So um, yeah, both both are great right now and I just choose to stick with Sony right now. Mm -hmm.